Hi YouTube, Engine Boy 100. Today's video is another Beamer Nation Keep Our Cars on the Road video. This video is to address the drive shaft clunk issue that we have. When you accelerate and you hear that clunk sound and you're like, what is that? Or some people have rocked their vehicle back and forth and they hear the drive shaft going clunk, 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 clunk. And they want to know what that is. Well, what it is, is the way our vehicles are designed the drive shaft splines between the drive shaft and the differential have an adhesive, this one right here, that holds the splines in place as you drive, as the, as, as the drive shaft rotates like this. Under normal driving circumstances, that this uh, adhesive could crack loose, allowing the splines to move, okay? It could break loose from lowering the differential to put in bushings. It could break from raising the differential, crack it too much. Whatever the mode, the end result is the same. When you drive, you hear clunk, clunk, or if you shake your vehicle, you'll hear this clunk, clunk, okay? That's because the, the splines, as they turn, when, the, when there's force put on, they move back and forth and you hear it knocking, hitting like that. So, is that a deal killer in terms of driving the vehicle? No, it is not. Can you drive your vehicle to work? Yes. Can you drive your vehicle to the shop to have it worked on? Yes. Do you want to be out launching your vehicle? No. Okay. Clearly, there's a dynamic of forces there, and you're going to have damage in some other way. You've got something moving that shouldn't be. Okay. You want to get it fixed before you start driving um, the car with any kind of enthusiasm. All right. So I have a bunch of tools here. I'm going to bring you guys in close, show you. Um, what they are, how I plan to use them, then after that we're going to go out to the shop and I'm actually going to perform this repair so that others can either do likewise or take it to the shop and have them watch the video. So come on in close and see what I got here. Alright, so these are the tools and the materials you're going to need to perform this task. Alright, so the first thing we're going to have to do is remove the 50 millimeter um, nut and that nut is right, um, <laughs> that tool is right here for removing that nut, it's 50 millimeters. And the nut is turned counterclockwise as you're facing the front of the vehicle. Okay, so it's screwed on towards the back. So if you're facing the back of the vehicle, to get that nut off, you're going to turn it clockwise. Very important, okay? You're gonna turn it clockwise if you're facing the back of the vehicle. Um, so that's what this big boy is for. And I think I'm going to trim it down because it's a little bit fat, but that's a whole nother deal. It doesn't, it doesn't quite, it fits in there, but it's a little tight. So I'm just going to trim it down about a millimeter for my own personal comfort. So this is my little setup on my little bandsaw that I'm going to be using to trim it down to size. Original thickness, thickness after cut. Now, the other two things we have, um, actual the Loctite that, that we're going to seal it with, but also I went ahead and went a step further and I got uh, the SF 7649. This is a Loctite primer. So after I've cleaned the splines really good, I'm gonna put this on and prep the surface for better reception of my Loctite uh, 648. All right, this is the primer, and this is the actual adhesive that is going to work um, anaerobically. Okay, you're gonna put a bunch of it on there, but not too much, but you wanna put enough so that the material itself seals the ends, the ends of the splines where it is, so that the center part is closed off from oxygen because this adhesive cures anaerobically, meaning it cures best without the presence of oxygen. So it is self-sealing. All right, so one thing I wanna highlight before we head out to the shop, and that is when you go to tighten the 50 millimeter nut on the drive shaft, okay, there is a very specific 
torque sequence procedure that you have to follow or you're going to put undue stress and pressure on the gears in your differential and you're going to mess your differential up. Okay, so this is the sequence. You initially tighten to 120 newton meters or 89 foot pounds. 120 newton meters converts over to 88.5 foot pounds, so 89 foot pounds. Okay, once you have it tightened to that foot pound or newton meter spec, mark where the nut is in relation to the star nut behind it and then rotate counterclockwise facing the rear 90 degrees okay because you're going to loosen that nut 90 degrees after you torque it to that initial 120 newton meter or 88 89 foot pounds okay then you're going to retorque it okay after you relieved it, you're going to retorque it to 45 newton meters or 33 foot pounds. And that's where you leave it. Okay? So that's going to get it tight enough to be as tight as it needs to be, but not have constant pressure on your differential. It's going to relieve that, but then tighten it back to where it needs to be. So that is the torque sequence as explained to me by the dealer. So you need to make sure you adhere to that if you attempt this task when you go to retorque and reinstall your new. Um, well, so I, do I have it here? I think it's already out in the shop. All right, real quick, I wanna go ahead and show you guys the actual kit that you get to replace that 50 millimeter nut. It comes with a O-ring and it comes with this plastic retaining ring. And the way they install is there's a little flange on the bottom here. If you can see that on the nut, this uh, little rubber gasket goes right over the top of that. And then once it's in, the blue ring goes on top like that. I wanted to show you guys here because it's a lot harder under the car. I didn't know whether I'll be able to get it really good. And once it's in, it's in. Um, they'll have access to it. Here's the part number 33127607158. The part number from the dealer. And this is the 50 millimeter nut that you have to replace because this is a one time use only uh, when you have to fix the clunk in your drive shaft. One another piece that you might want to uh, note when you go to take this out, be super careful because they've already set it up to fail for you to strip it. They've rounded off all the corners. Okay, so you have limited flat space. So if you don't have a precise wrench, you will strip it. And then you'll have a whole nother set of problems. Anyway, don't want to belabor it, but that's the kit. Okay, so hopefully this helps anybody. If you listen and watch the whole video and skip around, you need to watch these because they're information packed and they save you from making mistakes or your shop from making very costly mistakes and this is one of them. So let's head out to the shop. So we're under the car. I'm going to take this brace off so that the drive shaft has somewhere to go when we take a loose this 50 millimeter nut right here. All right, so let's see if the cut down version fits on the nut. Let's see if we can. Uh... Oh, look at that. Perfect. All right, so I'll put my counter on and give her a turn. Another important detail. Once you've taken your 50 millimeter nut off, when you go to torque it back on, know that your torque is going to be different if you put your Put your socket on and you have it straight like this. You're extending the length and increasing the torque. So if you want to use the exact torque that's specified, the 120 newton meters, you're going to have to have this 
at 90 degrees. In order to use the specified torque, you need to have your wrench at 90 degrees to your ratchet so that this and this is the same, the same distance. Then you can use the specified torque. All right, I got my pipe wrench counter down here and I'm gonna be cranking right here, clockwise facing the rear. See if I can get a little loose. My foot is braced and ready. Here we go. Guys, you can see by the threads here, I got it halfway out. All right, so this thing does not get easier. Once you break it loose to start unscrewing it, it does not get easier. So my advice to you is, unless you're bench pressing at least three or 400 pounds, do not attempt this because it's extremely physically demanding it's very hard i didn't think i was gonna be able to get it so uh, uh, it's good to know that it remains tight given in my opinion the very low torque requirement but given the fact that this nut stays tight the whole time it comes off now i understand they're just torquing it on the threads, backing it off, and then torquing it about 35, 33 foot pounds. So don't cheat and say, oh, well, I need it a little bit tighter. No, that's not what's holding this. This, this. this is a monster. They did a number on us. So I just wanted to give people a heads up. I'm not bragging, so just ignore that. Just ignore what I'm saying right here, but I'm going to say it just to help people out. In terms of your average individual on the street, I'm extremely strong, and I almost couldn't get it, okay? And I have a, I don't have a cheater, but I have like a two foot long, I mean, I'll show it to you right here. This is my ratchet. This is not short, okay? This thing... With me cranking with both my feet up on the side of the of the of the uh, the railing here, side of the railing right there, pushing on this thing, it is tight. I cannot emphasize it enough, so I'll, I'll just keep emphasizing it. But it's just good to know, so you know going in, you don't get your car taken apart and then realize it. It's it's not for your average person to try to do. Or even a mechanic that doesn't have the right tools. This is not, all right, I'm done. I think I can see why it's so hard to turn. There's, there's some kind of white thread lock in the threads. And it's just a two-handed bear to unscrew this thing. Oh man, it's still very hard. Two hands and two feet to turn this thing. All right. Very close. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get the drop on video, but there it is.
think that's it. I think I can, yeah, I can move it by hand. And that is it. I don't think I can do it with one hand. But there you go. That's the loose. I'll be taking dry shaft down and swapping her out. Show you the rest of the procedure. Try this nut back. Yeah, there you go. See, there's the splines. And then I can get on the end of here and maybe now I can just, there we go. And lay it down on my, on my towel here. And now we have some cleanup to do, guys. Clean up the splines, clean up the housing. Remove this little blue thing, do that right now. We can remove this gently, even though we're replacing it. I wanna tear it up. Yeah, I just don't wanna, still point, tearing it up needlessly. Yep, there it went, popped off. And this is just rubber. Just looks like a rubber gasket. Take that off, and then the nut should just come out of the housing just like that. Now we have to clean that up, clean up the splines, and then clean up the uh, clean up the dry shaft itself. Huh? It doesn't look like there was ever any on here. I don't see any of the loftite even on here at all. Let me, look at, let me look at the inside of, of the drive shaft here. Huh. Nothing. Nothing but a QR code. Look at that. There's nothing in there. So, yeah. I had to clean that up, brush it up, wire brush it, clean it, and then uh, apply my primer. Let the primer dry. And then apply the uh, sealer, the adhesive, and then it's got to be put together within 12 minutes. And we'll torque it down, we'll do the torque sequence, which is 120 newton meters, then back it off 90 degrees, and then 45 newton meters, or 33 foot pounds. All right, so let's get right into it. All right, so. The splines weren't really that dirty, but one thing I am going to clean rather aggressively is the threads here. I'm going to clean these threads really good because they have adhesive in them from the previous nut. And the nut that comes in the kit, it already has adhesive in, in the thread, so you don't need to apply it. But I'm going to clean this one really, really good so that when I put my new nut on there, these threads are clean and ready for the new adhesive. All right, I've got the threads and the splines cleaned up to where I'm happy with it. So now it's time to put the nut on and then apply the sealer. Look at these splines in the dry shaft too. Oh, you see the see those all cleaned up and ready for installation. So we'll do that. We'll do that next. All right. So now that I'm happy with the cleanliness of the splines. I'm going to apply this Loctite SF7649 primer. Let it dry before I put the actual adhesive on. I want to put it on both the uh, male and female splines. Now I like this particular one because uh, this cap ha actually has a brush on it and it also comes with a spray, a spray tip so you can spray it or brush it on uh, depending on what you prefer. I think I know why mine started clunking. Somebody's been in here before because I didn't do these. I didn't do this damage here, this damage to the dry shaft. And when I looked in here, there was virtually no adhesive whatsoever. I mean, at first I thought there was none. And then I could see, oh, there's a slight, slight film of it. So... I'm surprised it held as long as it did because you're supposed to have like 10 millimeters wide but like five millimeters thick of the adhesive come on i know because it has to have enough of it so that it self seals the inner portion so so it can dry without oxygen it needs to seal itself the inner portion of it needs to seal itself from oxygen so it can cure but dude this has been damaged somebody's been in here before me 
and and done something with this thing anyway it's all primered up and ready for reassembly so i'm going to install the nut and the little gasket first and i think the gasket is supposed to go down in this little okay either all the way down so this there you go and you gotta tuck that gasket down off in there too so that it's below below this lip all the way around so i'm not gonna make you watch me do that i'm gonna do that and then i'll put the blue cap on and i'll let you watch me put on some adhesive and then we will do the torque sequence all right, so I got the gasket seated around the base of the nut, and now we're going to put our retention ring on. Get that snapped into place, and now it is show time. We can go ahead and put our adhesive on and reinstall the dry shaft. Okay, here's another little tip. It has a valve, so this have you know this opens and closes like that. You got to open it up first. So I'm going to put it on the male side first. Valve open. Pretty generous here. You want to kind of have it toward the center. I don't want it to drip. And I'll do the other side. I'm going to let you guys watch me do the female side here as well. So we're going to do the female side. Pretty generous. You got 12 minutes, so you don't really need to rush, but you do need to, once you start putting this on, know that, hey, this has to go together. So this is it. I'm going to do the rest of this off camera, and uh, I'll let you guys see it when it's together. All right, both sides have been generously lubricated with adhesive. It is now time to get this to... Uh, Get this on, so we need to drive shaft a little bit, get it to engage the splines, and then we're going to, once it's straight, get it on, get it straight, we're going to uh, pull, get the nut. I don't think I can do that with one hand. <laughs> One note of, you have to realize that your car will put itself back in park. So you may have to put it back in neutral um, to get it to move so you can get the splines lined up. All right, so what am I doing now? Okay, well, BMW says you've got 12 minutes to engage it, the drive shaft, once you put the adhesive on. Nope, <clears throat> you got like three. So the stuff started hardening up on me before I could get the dry shaft in. So now I have to clean it out and do it again. So word of the wise, ignore the 12 minutes. Once you put this stuff on, put it on. Put it on right away. One minute, two minutes. Because it started hardening up on me after three. <sighs> yep, I put it on both. So I had to clean both male and female splines. All right, so here's the final torque to, there we go, 45. Hold well on. 